Hello and welcome to this brand new video and in this video we're going to be looking at the shadow root and specifically how this can be used to make better Chrome extensions. Now the shadow root is a way of adding elements to the page that don't have to inherit the CSS and styling of the other parts of the page so it makes it perfect for a content script type of Chrome extension. So to give a quick example say you want to add a sort of element in the corner of the page that has a specific um, type of styling if you don't use the shadow root, you have to make sure that you overwrite every single type of CSS property so that your um, design and your styling isn't affected by whatever styling there is on this page. And that can be different across the whole web. So the shadow root helps you create a specific area that's like a, a child element of a div, for example, that can not inherit any of the styling. So you can add this yourself. Now this is great for Chrome extensions because it allows us to sort of add this flexibility straight into your extension without having to create like an iframe or a separate area for your code to go into. Now this is only supported in Chrome, I think at the moment and possibly Firefox, um, but it depends on the version that you're using. But because Chrome extensions are specifically for Chrome, this is perfect. So I'll show you some examples now of how this actually works. So I'll be using CodePen um, as this example. And I'll start just with a really simple um, way of showing how this works. Now, as you can see here, I've got two divs. So they both look exactly the same. You have this one here and this one here. Now, because the styling is applied directly to this element here, they look the same. So you can see over here, I'm just applying it to this div class and they both have this class of div. But if I go down and add a shadow root to this second element here, so I've added a shadow root to the second element now. And as you can see, it's changed the text to say, this is my shadow root rather than this is another div. So as you can see straight away, it's removed the content of my um, sort of parent container and replaced it with the shadow root. So if we look into the inspector element over here, you can see what is actually happening. So up here is our first div. And then here's our second div over here. You can see the contents that we originally added are showing down here, but that's basically not shown, it's not accessed at all. And then we have our shadow root just here. And then underneath this is our content that we created. Now, if I was to give this the class of div as well, so as you can see here, I gave it a root class. But if I was to call this div and then root class and then inspect it again, you can see we have this element here, but it's not inheriting um, as you can see over here, it's not inheriting the class that we added in this element. So because it's inside the shadow root, it's sheltered from this styling that we created. Now, if I was to copy this block of CSS over here and add this into the sort of HTML that we have here. So if I was to create a style element, paste in this CSS and close this off just here, you can now see that it's adding this styling twice. So because of the way that the shadow root structured, these sort of issues can happen. But if we change this now up here to say div one, so we're only applying this styling up here, you can see we have the same display again, but because we've added this um, separate class inside of our shadow root, it can be custom for this element. So if I was to change the border color in here to blue, for example, you can see that this updates only on this one. So the CSS changes that we add don't filter back up to the actual page that you're working on and it's only contained within the shadow root. So this is a really quick example of how you can use the shadow root for styling. You can also add click events and sort of other event listeners into this area as well. So we do this just by saying um, the same that you normally would. So if I wanted to add a click event to this top div up here, so I'll just say so say div one document query selector div one add event listener click and we want it to call a function. So and in here we'll just say alert clicked. Okay, so if we click on this first div now, we see we get this click event just here. If I change this to div two, we should still get it to understand if we've clicked here. Yep. But if I wanted to only access this from within the shadow root, so if my um, parent class had a lot of sort of 
extra elements inside here. So it wasn't just this one div. I could have more content in here as well. So I could add extra divs, extra elements inside of here. So if I wanted just to reach the div that sort of is inside here, this won't be able to find it because technically it doesn't exist, even though the shadow root does have a div inside there. So to access this div, what we need to do is first access a sort of parent container. So what you can do to access this element is to first add in a line like this. So what I'm doing is I'm accessing the parent shadow element. So as we added this to our div two, you can see up here, we're adding our host into div two. I'll explain exactly how you attach this in a moment. But once it's attached, you just have to find this parent element that you added your shadow root onto, and then go to the shadow root um, parameter just here. And then as I've set this as a variable, I can access this again. So I'm just calling shadow element, and then I'm running my query selector as you normally would. So as long as you get your parent element just here, and then you set that, um, instead of saying document query selector, you just use your shadow root element, and then you can run all of your um, events as you normally would. So as I see here, if I click onto it, it now works. And if I was to change that to div one, obviously just to show the difference here, that wouldn't have any connection because there isn't a root, a shadow root attached to div one. So if we just scroll up again, you can see how it works. So first you just find the host element that you want to use. And then the command to actually add and create our shadow root is host. So that's just this element just here, attach shadow mode open. So that means that you can actually make JavaScript events to these elements inside here. And then we just add a sort of element inside here. So we've called it, um, we've created a div inside. We set the class that we want this div to have. And then you just set all the contents just here. Now what you could do, um, which might be, might be an easy way of controlling this, is having an area on the page over here, like a, a separate, that so you would call like um, shadow, shadow contents. And then you have all of your sort of child elements in here, so the rest of the content of your extension. And then you could grab this code just here and insert it that way, rather than having to sort of write it inside the JavaScript variable just here. But that is how quickly you can get started with the shadow root. Um, and it's a good way to sort of improve your extensions and make them much more sturdy when they're being used across the web. If you've got any questions on how you can use the shadow root in your specific extensions, feel free to um, drop a comment below. Uh, but one more thing to mention before I finish this video, um, I'm thinking about launching a range of extension templates soon um, for people to get started with Chrome extensions. So it could be um, to do with content scripts, working within Gmail, um, how to do a pop-out extension, linking up with Firebase. So if you, this is something you'll be interested in, um, please let me know and what sort of templates would help you the most. Um, and it's something I'm gonna try and sort of launch later this year. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video, feel free to um, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you can find out when I upload more videos like this. Thanks for watching.